Okay, well, we're glad you're here this morning. And I hope you brought your Bible. Because we'll do some reading. And hopefully we can learn something that will be useful to us. Uh, talk to me about writers of the New Testament. Who are some of the writers? Sorry? Moses, okay. In the Old Testament, that's correct. Somebody else. In the New Testament, Luke, okay. Luca. Let me just stop right here. The last several weeks when I've taught, we've talked about the book of Luke. Is that right? Okay. So we've talked about Luke a lot, so that's one. Who else in the New Testament? Okay, Paulo, Paul. Good. John was one. Matthew was one. That's true. Who else? James, good. Peter was one, yes. Mark was one, good. Jude, yes. Is that about all? John, we got John, we got Matthew already, yeah. I think that's, that's about all. Okay, now, of those authors, which wrote more than one book? Marco. John, okay. What did John write? What books, what books did John write? We won. Revelation. That's one. What else? No, no, John. What else did John write? All right, one, two, three, John. Is that all? Gospel of John. Okay, so John evidently wrote five books. Okay? Who else wrote more than one? Paul, yes, he wrote a number of letters. That's true. Peter, okay, there's first and second Peter, good. Luke, what did Luke, did Luke write more than one? Oh, Acts. Oh, who wrote, who wrote the book of Acts? Luke, ah, that's right. So today we want to talk about these two books, the book, the book of Luke and the book of Acts. They were both written by the same man. Okay. The book of Luke. What does it talk about? What does Luke talk about? Dang, I saw your lips moving. The life of Jesus. Yeah, exactly right. Luke talks about the life of Jesus. In fact, let's look at Luke chapter 1. We're going to, let's read verses 1 to 4. And I guess we'll just start on this side. Okay, verse 1. Luke chapter 1, verse 1. Okay, let's stop right there. In verse 1, uh, have, were there more than one story about Jesus? 
Yeah, many had written about Jesus. Okay, so verse 2, Dennis. Okay, so people that wrote about Jesus, this says were... Oh, eyewitnesses. Okay. So who do you think were some eyewitnesses that wrote? Well, Matthew was an eyewitness. Who else? Peter was an eyewitness, yes. Who else? John was an eyewitness. Okay, so there are several people that were eyewitnesses. Do you think Luke was an eyewitness? What does this say? Verse 2 says... Go home and tie, would you read it? Oh, okay. It says the eyewitnesses passed it down to us, right? So was Luke an eyewitness? It looks like maybe he wasn't an eyewitness. But did he get it from eyewitnesses? Well, he says he did. All right, Kunkan, uh, verse 3, please. Kunkan. Okay. Kan, Kan, what? Tante o Philo, okay? All right, so Luke said he carefully investigated. All right, so he is collecting the story of Jesus. And we believe that God is involved in this writing. We believe that scripture is God breathed. And so as Luke was listening and reading and interviewing and collecting his research, God is also involved in the writing of this uh, book. Okay, and then verse 4. Uh, on this side, who has verse 4? Okay, so Luke wants people to know the truth. All right, so Luke is writing about the birth of and life of Jesus. Okay, now looking at this book, when does Jesus' ministry start? <coughs> what chapter in the book of Luke does Jesus' ministry start? Yeah, open your book, open your Bible and look. Help me see you. Where does it start? <clears throat> oh, I see some fingers saying one thing and I hear some people saying something different. Oh, I see, I see the number four from several people. No, 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 no. 
Botisi. Chapter 4. Botisi. Okay. In, in chapter 1, what do you have? What, what happens in chapter 1? Is there anything about Jesus in chapter 1? Is there anything about Jesus in chapter 1? Yes or no? What? In chapter 1? Okay, the yeah, the foretelling of his birth. When was Jesus actually born? In Luke, where do you read of Jesus being born? Ah. Okay, so he's born in chapter 2. What happens in chapter 3? John? Who is John? Oh, John the Baptist. And what does John the Baptist do? Ah, good point. John the Baptist baptizes Jesus. What chapter is that in? Shelley. <laughs> What chapter, oh, okay. So John the Baptist baptizes Jesus in chapter 3. What happens in chapter 4? Oh. Temptation. Where does the temptation take place? Where? But he see, Conning. Gun took long, good, couldn't he? Oh, sorry. In, in chapter 4, verse 1, where does the temptation take place? Oh, in the, in the wilderness, right? Is Jesus ministering yet? Is he serving yet? Is he preaching yet? Not yet? How old is Jesus? Yeah, he's about 30. And, and he hadn't started working yet. That we know about. Hmm. What's he been doing for 30 years? He's what? Okay. He's been listening. He's been reading. He's been developing a relationship with his father. His father in heaven. Oh, what about his what about his physical father? Who was his father? Joseph. What do you know about Joseph? You know he's okay, a carpenter, good. What else? Do you know anything about Joseph? Okay, he accepted Mary. That's true. But really, you don't know anything about Joseph. And when I asked the question, there was silence. And that's the right answer. Yeah, the right answer. We don't know. But Jesus did have a relationship with God, his father. So when God came to earth, he spent a lot of time becoming a man.
when a Ferran comes to Thailand. He needs to take some time learning about Thailand. And if a Khon Thai goes to America, you have to adjust. Thank you. You have to prop to a. You have to adjust. Yeah, to live in a different country. And if you're from Pakistan and you live in Thailand, it takes some adjustment. And if you are from Chiang Mai and you come and live in Bangkok, yeah, it takes some adjustment. When you come from heaven to live on earth, yeah, that takes some adjustment too. Okay, I think so. So for 30 years, you, you don't know much about Jesus' life. You knew when he was born. You knew when he was 12 years old and went to Jerusalem. And then you know when he's baptized about 30 years later, or 30 years old. Okay? Let's turn to chapter 9. Luke chapter 9. Wow. Who is that? <laughs> Wonderful. Welcome. Ying and Jai from Colorado. Yeah. Oh, it's midnight in Colorado. Well, no, it's 1030. Okay. In chapter 9, Jesus is involved in his ministry. What does he do first in chapter 9? What does he do first? I don't think so. Uh, the the 5,000 people that he feeds, we're going to talk about that tonight. <laughs> Come back, yeah. We're going to talk about the feeding of the 5,000 tonight. But in Luke chapter 9, starting in verse 1, what does Jesus do? Yes. He has some people he's been training. And he sends them out. Ah, so here's the next level of his work. He has his ministry. He has the ministry of his apostles and his disciples. So do you think this is at the middle, or sorry, at the beginning, at the middle, or the end of his ministry? Okay, now, but uh, the beginning we said was at the end of chapter four. Is that right? So, chapter five, six, seven, eight, he's doing some things. In chapter 9, he's got this group of people he's sending out. Is this still the beginning? Is it the middle? Or is it the end of his work? In the middle? I think this, that could be right. Because at the beginning, he's doing some things, but he's already thinking about the next step. Other people taking the work. Okay, now let's skip down to verse 51. Luke chapter 9, verse 51. 
Okay, and dang dang, please. Okay, louder, please. Ah, louder, please. Dang ko niyo ayon. Kap. Okay. Uh, in English, Pam, would you read that? Okay. Loud. Okay, two things here. What's number one? It comes close to his time for what? To be lifted up. What is it? To lift it up. Cooper Kai, what did you say? Okay, lift it up. <clears throat> lift it up. I, I, maybe two different thoughts here. What would the two thoughts be? Or maybe three things. Okay, keep your finger right here because we're going to come back. Let's look in John chapter three. Yes, save this verse. We'll come back. John chapter three. John. Verse fourteen. Oh. What does that mean? Lift it up. What's Jesus talking about? As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, do you remember that story? Moses made, God told Moses to make a, sta a snake and put it on a stick. Okay, and this says just like Moses lifted up the snake, so Jesus, what? So Jesus must be lifted up. What does that mean? What was that? Yeah, I think so. Lifted up on the cross. So that's one possibility. Lift it up on the cross. And then there's a possibility Jesus lifted up from the grave. Yeah. Okay. Is that right? Maybe. Is there a third lifted up? The resurrection. Uh, no, 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 sorry. Ascension. Ascension. So those are at least three times when physically it looks like Jesus was lifted up. Okay, so let's go back to Luke chapter 9. The time approached for him to be taken up to heaven. And Pam, you said the time approached what? Receive up into heaven. In Thai, it says what? To grab kun pai. So this sounds to me like it's the third one. The resurrection. Is that right? No, no, sorry. Ascension. Third. Kun suan. Because you have death lifted on the cross. You have lifted up from the grave. And 40 days later, he went into heaven. Those three are really kind of the same thing. The death, burial, resurrection of Jesus, it's kind of the same story. 
So, in Luke chapter 9, verse 51, number one, the time is getting close for those things to happen. And then, what's number two in verse 51? And what do you have? What's number two? I'm sorry? Absolutely. And what does your Bible say? Jesus resolutely set out for Jerusalem. And your Bible might say he set his face towards Jerusalem. What does it mean to set your face towards something? Determine. Here's where I'm going. If you look at uh, a runner at, at the Olympics, Waving in the stands, hello, my dear. No, he's looking where he's going, right? So this verse says Jesus is looking to Jerusalem. What does that mean? Okay. Good. Okay. Muman. Okay, good. But why Jerusalem? Sorry? Okay. Yeah? Th these are true. This is right. Why Jerusalem? Okay, the activity at Jerusalem, is that at the beginning, in the middle, or the end of his ministry? Oh, it's at the end, for sure. But now, where is Jesus? The beginning, the middle, or the end? Well, now you've changed your answer. <laughs> A minute ago, you said it was in, in the middle. Is that right? You have chapter 5, 6, 7, 8 is the very beginning. And now this is at the, in the middle. But he's looking to the end. He's training people for after he's gone. He knows that he's getting ready to go back to heaven. And he is preparing himself for the end. Okay, skip down to verse... Uh, Actually, we studied verse 51 before. Uh, let's look in chapter 13. Luke chapter 13. Verse 22. Jan, do you have that, please? Aha! Uh -huh. What's Jesus doing? Two things, yes. He's teaching. He's working. Ministry. And number two, what's he doing? Yo. Uh, setting his sight toward Jerusalem. And, 
And this is kind of what the book of Luke is about. Going to Jerusalem. Jesus preparing for Jerusalem. Jesus moving towards his death. Let's read a little bit more here. 23, right? Uh, sorry, let's skip down to 31, verse 31. Okay, who is in verse uh, 31? Pharisees. Where do you find Pharisees? Where would you find more Pharisees? Uh, in the city or in the or outside? I think they're in the Muang. Yeah, I think they're in the city. Any idea what city you might find Pharisees in? Yeah, I think you might find them in Jerusalem because they are very religious people. They act. They're active in the temple. And so they're in Jerusalem. In this verse, what does the Pharisee say? Go away. Now, where is Jesus going, wanting to go in the book of Luke? And the Pharisees are saying what? Yeah, go away. Why does why do the Pharisees tell Jesus to go away? Okay, Herod. Who who is Herod? Okay, he, he's a political leader. Where is Herod? Yeah, I think he's in Jerusalem. I would think so. And so the Pharisees are saying, Jesus, go away, because Herod wants to kill you. Does Herod really want to kill Jesus? Maybe. I, I don't know. Do the Pharisees like Jesus and they want to save his life? Yes or no? Uh, no. They're jealous. And it sounds to me like they're saying, go away, Jesus. Uh, Herod wants to kill you. Uh, I don't know if Herod really wants to kill him or not, but... The, Pharisees want Jesus out of Jerusalem. Next verse, please. Okay, so what does Jesus say? Is he interested in Herod? <laughs> he said, I'm not worried about Herod. What is Jesus going to do? Drive out demons? What else? Heal people, yes. And that's, when is that going to take place? Today? Tomorrow? And the third day. Does that make you think of something? Third day. 
Oh. Is the third day important to Jesus? Is that important to Jesus? Oh, yeah. And so he says, on the third day, this verse says what? I will reach my goal. He says, I'm moving to Jerusalem, and I have a goal. Next verse, please. Thirty-three. Yes, and so he says, "Today, tomorrow, a prophet cannot die outside of Jerusalem." So he set his face toward Jerusalem. He's reaching. He's reaching his goal. And what is that goal? death. That's what he's planning for. That's what he's moving toward in the book of Luke. Next verse, please. 34. Next verse, please. What the fuck? Okay, what does Jesus feel about Jerusalem? How does he feel about Jerusalem? He's going to Jerusalem. He's going to die in Jerusalem. Does he care about himself? What's he concerned about here? Yeah, Jerusalem. Guys, come on. Yeah, who are you and what are you doing? Aren't you listening? Aren't you paying attention? I've been in this city before and talking to you and you're not listening. Okay, Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19, verse 11. Okay, so Jesus, what is Jesus doing here? What's he doing? My, what is he doing? Is he eating? Yes or no? No. Is he sleeping? No. What's he doing? Is he teaching? Oh, yes, he's teaching. What is he teaching? Oh, a parable. Okay, so he's teaching the people. And, and, then, and then what does it say? Because he was near Jerusalem. Now he's been moving towards Jerusalem this whole book. And now he's near Jerusalem. And he tells a very interesting story. 
And it's a story, we don't have time to read it, but uh, a story that talks about the Jewish people and their reception of Jesus. All right, skip down to verse 41. Okay. Yes. Oh, what city is he approaching? Oh, so now he's moving closer and closer to Jerusalem. Is this the beginning, the middle, or the end of his ministry? Yeah. He's been moving this way the entire book. And now, and now he's close. Okay, next verse, please. Do you have that? He has it in Pakistani. Would you read that in Pakistani, please? Okay, we'll hear the Pakistani language. 41, 42. 42, 42. 42, please. Yes. Oh, thank you. Okay, could you read that same verse, 42, in English, please? Do you have that? Please, Ian. He said, if you had known this day, what day is it? Saturday? Thursday? Well, what, what day is it? Yeah, I don't know. It's one day, one in seven. I don't know what day it was. But he's not talking about the day, 24 hours. He's, talk, he's talking about the time. He said, I've been coming to Jerusalem. And now I'm here. The day is at hand. And if you would understand what it means for me to come to Jerusalem, you would have... Oh. Next verse, please. 43. No, not so nice. 44, please. Cut up, I cup, can pee cup, need me cup, see some see. Don't dang when he cup. Crap home. I'll bow, pass out high. Auna, okay, thank you. Okay, is this good news? He's been moving to Jerusalem. He's in Jerusalem. The people in Jerusalem see him. Does he have good news or bad news? Oh, it's not good for them. Okay. In the very end of verse 44, he says, You did not recognize the time of God's coming to you. Jesus is moving to Jerusalem. And here it says, God is moving to Jerusalem. God is moving to Jerusalem. Yeah. And they didn't know it. They thought it was just a rabbi. Yeah, an itinerant preacher. Maybe a political figure. It was God. And they didn't know it. That's 
the message of the book of Luke, Jesus moving to Jerusalem. And what is the second book that Luke wrote? Get you kind, yes, the book of Acts. Let's turn to Acts chapter 1. This class didn't start till 12.20, uh, 11.20, so we have one hour. <laughs> and, <laughs> and Ball is crying. <laughs> no, <laughs> maybe, maybe 10 more minutes. <laughs> so Acts chapter 1. Uh, verse 1. Would you read that for us, please? Oh, in my first book. What is my first book? Oh, the book of Luke. And what did he write about? All the things that Jesus began to do and teach. Okay, so in the book of Luke, we have Jesus doing and teaching and moving to Jerusalem. Now in the second book, we have something different. Uh, look in verse 4. Kunwanida, please. Okay, so Jesus told his disciples something really important. What did he say? Yeah, Jesus has been moving to Jerusalem, and now, now he tells his apostles to what? Stay here. Stay. Kun Pam is training our dog, Crockett. <laughs> Sit down. Stay. I said stay. <laughs> the apostles are better than my dog. <laughs> Jesus said, stay in Jerusalem. How long do they have to stay there? Okay. Wait for the gift my father promised, which you heard me speak about. Wait for the promise. What promise was that? Okay, put your finger here. Let's go back to Luke 24. Luke 24. Hmm. So, verse 47, please, sir. And please read it loudly. Okay, so Jesus says the gospel is going to be preached. Starting where? Jerusalem. Okay, next verse, mine. What 
48. Okay, I want you to stay where? Stay in Jerusalem. Waiting for what? The promise that comes with power, yes. Okay, so here Jesus had told his disciples stay in Jerusalem. You'll receive a promise. The promise will come with power. What was that promise? What was the promise? Yeah, God's Holy Spirit. Jesus said, I have a gift to give you. After I go back to my father, my father will send the spirit. He had told them about that in John chapter 16. He mentioned it in John chapter 14. And now in Luke chapter 24, he says, wait for the gift that will come with power. So now let's go back to Acts chapter 1. So in verse 4, at the very end of verse 4, he says, wait. He says, wait for the gift my father promised. Stay in Jerusalem and wait for that gift. And what was that gift? God's Spirit. When did God pour out His Spirit on the earth? When did God pour out His Spirit on this earth? In Acts chapter... Oh, Acts chapter 2. And so he says, Acts chapter 1, wait in Jerusalem for the gift, the promise. It will come with power. And then the next chapter, the promise came, the Spirit came with great power. Okay, let me finish my point. Yeah, I don't know what the boat reading is. All right. The book of Luke, Jesus is moving towards Jerusalem. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Would you hold this, please? Okay, stop right there. You will receive... What will you receive? Power! Oh, did he already tell them that they were going to stay in Jerusalem until they had power? Yeah, he did. Okay, so now he's telling them again. Stay in Jerusalem till you have power. Ah, and when was that power? With the Holy Spirit, yes. Okay, verse 8. Okay, thank you. This is the message of the book of Acts. Acts 
This is the outline of the book. He says, you will be my witnesses first where? Jerusalem. He had told them, he said, you wait in Jerusalem for the promise and the power. Wait in Jerusalem. Verse 8. You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem. After Jerusalem, Judea. What is Judea? What is Judea? Oh, it's the area around Jerusalem. Yeah, it's the, the province. Okay, you have the city, Jerusalem, and then you have the province of Judea. So Jesus says, you'll be my witnesses starting first in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria. Where is Samaria? Is Samaria the same as Judea? Yes or no? No. Samaria is not the same as Judea. Who lives in Judea? Jews. Jews live in Judea. Who lives in Samaria? Samarians. Yeah. This is a different country. Different people. Different religion. And so Jesus said, you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria. And in Acts chapter 8, Philip goes to preach in Samaria. And then Jesus says, after Samaria, you will be my witnesses where? To Bangkok. Yeah. Yeah. Or to Karachi. Or Manila. Yeah. Or Albuquerque. Or Afghanistan. Or Nigeria. Or Chiang Mai. Yeah. Uh, right at. Yeah. All the places where some of us are from. North Carolina. And this is the outline of the book of Acts. Where did it start? In Jerusalem. And then to the ends of the earth. So if I can get on this side, you see in the book of Luke, Jesus is setting his sight to go to Jerusalem. And that's what Luke wrote about in the book of Luke. His next book, From Jerusalem to the Ends of the Earth, starting in Jerusalem. Looking back to Jerusalem and looking elsewhere. Looking at the big picture. From the beginning to now. Are we at the beginning, the middle, or the end of Jesus' ministry? Well, it looks like maybe we're on the on the end down here. And so the death and burial and resurrection is more the beginning or the middle, I don't know. But I'm just saying we're taking a bigger picture. 
Because Jesus' ministry continues today. Is Jesus still working? Does Jesus have hands? Does he have feet? He does? Well, yeah, he does, right here. Right? What did Jesus say before he went back to heaven? Lo, I am with you always. Yeah. It, okay, when Jesus, when they forecast, when they foretold the birth of Jesus, they said he will be called Emmanuel. What does Emmanuel mean? God with us. Jesus is God in Jerusalem. He gave us his spirit. And he continues with us today in Bangkok. Or Chiang Mai, or wherever you are. We are God's hands. We are God's feet. And we continue the work of Jesus, which started back in Jerusalem. At the very end of the book of Luke, and the beginning of the book of Acts. God bless you. Have a great week.